right, I think you were talking about commonalities. And in fact, in the book, it talks about the, the person who was dying actually had um, friends, had a friendship group. But the connect, the only connection they had is that we were drinking. But then when they were coming to the life, they recognised that they weren't really the true friends and they'd sort of always neglected the friends that they really did have as friends. But they, they sort of went to the, the, the drinking group. And I suppose there's a real good lesson in that. Isn't there? I think there's a good lesson in that for me, as in, I suppose if you've got a friend connection, is it a true friend and is the connection healthy for you? So that's probably quite difficult if you've got an emotional attachment to see it from a perspective of, like, I suppose from their, their point of view, the person who was passing away, I only realised that when they were passing away, right? That, that's a really interesting thing for me because who you might think are your friends may not necessarily be your friends. You're just staying friends with them because of a commonality, which may not necessarily mean your friends, yeah. which I think is really interesting. And, and maybe we should really think about our friendships and whether they're adding value or are we keeping friends just because it's, we don't want to be lonely because, but, but then should we be trying to connect with people where we have these deep connections? Yeah. I'm just thinking about that. So I'm just really thinking out my thoughts out loud. Any thoughts on any of that? I can see how that can happen. I've heard hmm. versions of that sort of situation before. And I think it's tough because actually you might, like you said, realise you only had this one thing. If you remove that, you'll all drift apart or not have anything to talk about or whatever it is. But I don't know, whilst that commonality exists and if you spend a lot of time, is that not, you know, that could be a positive thing still. It, you know, it might still add value, you might still get lots of enjoyment from it. I think it's it's real individual, I think, as to what, I think Ryan referenced this sort of thing at the start, but what what does friendship mean to you and what are you looking to get from something or what can you offer to people? And I think sometimes that situation would meet needs and other times it wouldn't. Yeah, and I also think you've got to have the friendship. This is what, listening to you there, the friendship has got to, you've got to try and look at it from perspective. Is it like healthy, yeah. I suppose? Is it, are you holding on to that relationship? I suppose it's a bit like, I suppose, you know, your friendship is not love, right? But... It's almost like you get you could get into a habit of it, but it, you know those you know I suspect we all have friends in the past that have been super negative and well I talked about my friend, but way in the past didn't I? I talked about a friend that really put me down. Yes, like, and I think that's that's really more friend, the thing right? to be concerned with. Isn't so much right? how you know how deep or how broad are your connections, but are the you know are these people supporting you? Are they empowering you? Are they helping you relax? Whatever the thing is, or actually are these people sucking? the life out of you one way or another and, and keeping you down and again that that will be different for everybody and it's very situational but i think that's that's the thing to be more wary of i think than anything else and it's really difficult well i found it difficult i'm not saying young people can't analyze their friendships of course they can but i was the age where i, I wasn't that aware of the impact of that right till now until i became more fully aware right but i'm not saying as i say i'm not saying young people cannot be aware but I think this is the message for me is we have to be aware of what the friendship's doing for us and does it help, you know, does it, is it healthy, I suppose is one. But I mean, there's a lot of different, there's a lot of um, scoping healthy, isn't it? What defines it's a healthy, it. and healthy it's always, friendship? It's always yeah. different when you're in the bubble as opposed to outside the yeah. bubble. That's, yeah. it's the emotion, isn't it? Because I didn't realise when I was in the bubble that it was that bad. Yeah, It's only when, you know, we'd, we'd gone our separate ways, we'd, we, you know, we'd gone separate ways and then I heard that they passed away but when they passed away it's really interesting and because and, when I reflect back on that relationship although I I suppose did I feel bad I'm not sure whether I feel bad about it and I don't know whether I should feel bad about it or someone passing away but for me I don't you know they didn't really they didn't really encourage me so do I feel bad I don't know if I do and I still don't know I still you know, I'm still, I, I don't, I suppose I don't want to, I don't want to come across as not caring. But when I look back at that relationship, I don't think it was that healthy. There's no should with that either, Joe. I mean, I've, you know, anyone who's listened to this for more than five minutes can know that you are a, you know, a caring and well-intentioned person and you, you feel what you feel. There's no obligation either way. Sometimes things you say, oh, well, that should do. There's other times where there's things that I'm not, that are sad, but I'm not connected to in any way. And they've, hit me really hard it's you know it's all it's all very individual i think so i wouldn't question those those sorts of well, do you know what this is part of really interesting for me because i work with a lady she was absolutely lovely and i, and I, I i'd love to mention their name but i, I don't have permission from their their daughters 
But this person, I, it was my, my very first job. And this person was a lot older than me. Like, I would say, well, I was probably in my 20s and they were probably in their mid 50s, coming to late 60s. So we were like 30, 40 years, is that something like that? Anyway, something like that. And we had, it was brilliant. It was, it was just like, do you know when you meet someone and you just like kindred spirits? Like, it doesn't matter about the age, you just, you just connect. And it was just weird. Anyway, I heard that they died. And I had the iPad and I was looking up and I was scrolling. And I remember this, this, and I was scrolling. And I got a message from one of their daughters and said, oh, you know, did you know, you know, my mum passed away. And I'm like, it, like, this is when it hit me that this was a real true friendship. Although I hadn't spoken for ages, tears just come strolling down. And actually on the iPad, I felt, even now, I can still feel that emotion because they did have a big impact on my life. But we didn't speak, you know. After I left that place of work, we connected a few times. We didn't really connect. Um, so I don't know whether that's, is that a regret or is that that I just really cared for them and that's how it came out. But even then, I still feel that tinge of sadness, even now, um, to say, you know, that person was really lovely to me and um, they were well-intentioned. We still always go on lunch breaks and it was a lovely, a lovely relationship, actually. Um, and my wife would know who I'm talking about. Or she used to talk about her when, uh, when, when I came home. So anyway... <laughs>